Hi, and welcome to my first devlog video. In this video series I want to show you the game creation process. As an example, I will build platform type game. The game, as you have figured, about some unnamed hero who can pretty much interact with platform world. And that is the main idea behind the game. I'm currently developing the game in Unity, and in this episode, I want to show you how this game was started and how graphic art was created. So it's going to be some a bit of an introduction episode and not too much developing. In the future episodes we will be moving on from where the game stands today, so let's go back to the beginning. Alright, with that said let's get moving. So, as you can see, I've set up this quick example level. And in this phase, I'm not using any kind of graphics. Just trying focus on prototyping. There's not much in here. There's currently just a two quad objects that represent a player which has nothing on him, and a platform, as well, as a main camera of course. I've gone ahead and placed colliders on the player and platform. And a rigid body 2D component on a player. With that, our player starts to interact with the physical world. The very first thing I had to do was a movement mechanics. So I dive into scripting. First I need to make a reference to Unity build an input system, which returns the value of the virtual axis identified by his name. In our case, the value will be in the range minus 1 and 1, for keyboard and joystick input. Since input is not smooth, keyboard input will always be either minus 1, 0 or 1. This is useful if you want to do all smoothing of keyboard input processing yourself. And this is one of those little things why developers love Unity so much. The next what we need is to apply axis value with speed, and apply all of this to our rigid body velocity. Here I forgot important thing. In order to change rigid body velocity, we should make access to rigid body component. Let's fix it. And after a bit of scripting and couple of errors, our cube starts to walk left and right. And this is success. After that, I started to draw pixel art, and I'm doing this in Photoshop. Now let me get this in out the way, this is not a sponsored video, I just like this software at all. You can do pixel art in any software that you like. I started with ground tiles, and as you see, I'm using very limited colors. Sometimes, less equals cool. By the way, my tiles are based in 16 by 16 pixels. I'm using pixel art in all of my game projects. Some people's hate pixel art, other people's love it and other don't care. I love pixel art and I'm sticking with what I know. So this is a time lapse of me working on artwork. Let's get started. I spending much time for detailing phase, and this is certainly last but it's not least. It doesn't mean that you have to clutter your frame with a bunch of details. What it does mean is creating very intentional graphics. So, as you can see, I've got extra blocks and some kind of filling blocks, to make scene more narrative. I can duplicate this blocks in various places. So finally right here we're simply stamping various blocks to get final hint of depth. So, as you can see, this artwork is created with three simple elements just using stamps. Good enough for now. Next time I will improve my tiles even better. Time to pay attention to our hero. 
Just watch how I'm doing that. Perfect. Now, let's import our graphics to Unity and see how it's fit there. Here, I'm creating some extra folders and just drag my PNG files to them. Once it's done, Unity will automatically import them in a project. The next thing we gonna do is set some properties to optimize graphic files. Before moving next, we should to clean our collision detection, reconfigure main camera, and make some touches to gravity scale. Now, if we run our game, we can move our hero left and right. Before we move on, let's make quick modification to the player movement script in order to change the direction of sprites facing, when we move. We save our code and go back into Unity. Now, if we run our game, and move the hero left and right, we will see that he also faces in correct direction. 
let's get back to Photoshop and draw some necessary animations to our hero. Looks pretty good. We now ready to connect our animations to a hero in the game. This process is a little bit tricky and can't be explained in minutes. Leave me a comment if you want to see more about 2D animator, animations and animation states and I will make a separate video to cover this topic. In order to make animations work, we need to get reference to animator component, just like we did previously. After that, we can point to our hero, which animation should be shown when moving. And we need to make else condition. Once we detect if hero no longer moving we should point animator to idle animation. Let's save our script and get back to Unity. When we run our game we will see how the player starts from the idle state. And if we hit left or right arrow keys, we will see walk animation cycle. At this point we have all of our animations set up correctly. Our hero can walk and stand, and we can see the right animation when each of this states changes. And that's all for now. Let me know in a comments your suggestions about this devlog. In a next video we will go deeper and implement a lot more actions. Thank you for watching.